Da-da, 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 da-da. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to talk to you about one of the most important foundation when it comes to African cultures and African traditions and African spirituality. It is the importance of marriage. Marriage is not a Western uh, institution. It wasn't created by Western world or people from uh, Europe or anything like that. Um, marriage is a spiritual and it's part of uh, every African tradition as long as you can remember. It is a rite of passage, especially for men. It is also a way to receive additional protection and additional blessings. It is a commitment that one takes for themselves, for the partner that they are going to be with, the families that are involved, the village, the community, and its own na nation. And that commitment has to be present at all at, the, at all these different levels. For yourself, for the person you're going to be with, for the two families are going to be joined, for the village, for the community, and for the nation. In order to receive all of the blessings and all of the uh, utmost benefits, all of these different levels of commitment have to be present. And um, it is important to understand that any time the family unit is being attacked, it is not just an attack on you as an individual, or on you as a couple, or on you as a family, but it is an attack on your community, on an attack on your own nation. Because in African tradition, in African spirituality, the family is at the core. The couples that comes together to bring about the ancestors, to bring about the children that will come from that union. Okay, a union that requires that the men and the women come together to bring about these children that they are going to be raising with the community. That's the model that you're going to go and find in all of the African traditions. So this is why I don't want to hear about what is being done somewhere else in someone else's tradition. I'm speaking about my own tradition and most I, I have yet to see an African tradition that doesn't function with that particular model where men, a uh, man and a woman come together to bring offspring that are going to build a family, build a community, build a village. And that that man and that woman are responsible for the primary upbringing of the children, even though the extended family, the village and the community are responsible for the secondary, tertiary and other addition that the child needs for its, uh, its proper development for its proper fulfillment, for the guidance that's necessary to fulfill the destiny. And that's very important to understand that it is a spiritual protection, it is a spiritual blessing to come to the point where you are of age of marriage and that you are willingly taking this commitment, willingly understanding the importance of this commitment that goes well beyond yourself, that is of a divine nature, that is a true blessing. So there've been uh, discussions about marriage. Um, oftentimes, people are thinking that, oh, you know, it's a, uh, it's old, uh, that you need to jump in something. If you want to jump into something new, go ahead and jump in it. For me, I'm talking about tradition. Tradition are not following trends. They're not doing what's popular now. They're not doing what you feel like is right or what you feel like, um, uh, what makes you feel good. It's not about that. Anyone who's raising a child, who has raised a child, knows that there are times where it doesn't feel so good to have to wake up in the middle of the night to go get a bottle or to feed a baby. Sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't feel so good. You may not be in the mood, but you have to do it anyways because it is a commitment. It is a responsibility. It's part of your role. So many of you often time in consultations or in other ways, in discussions, complain about your parents not doing this, complaining about your parents not doing that and, and what you missed and what you didn't have and etc. etc. But you are not even willing to do that for the children that you have now. You're not even willing to do that for the children around you now. So that they don't have to sit just like you and complain and point fingers and do all of that. 
and tomorrow it is those own children that you have now that will be pointing the finger at you as adults saying that you didn't do this and you didn't do that and this vicious circle is going to go on and on and on so it's time for you to look and realize that in everything there are advantages and disadvantages with every reward comes from responsibility responsibility is part of it you're not going to escape it this is not a place where you just get to play and laugh you're going to have to put in some work it's part of the process you don't just become a wake up a good person or, or become a good person you have to work at it every single day and part of that comes from the decision that you make the action that you take the way uh, you think what you choose to implement or not how you choose to do it all of that are part of it to make sure that you are actually doing what it takes so it is important for you to take the time to think and to really wonder about the things that are important stop looking at those statistics oftentimes people bring up the fact that well 50% of marriages end up in divorce you know is it worth it it's not worth it taking that chance to those of you who entertain this kind of thought I will say how many of your friends who are not married are still together from last week from a month ago from six months ago some of you pointing to 50% of marriages end up in divorce ignore the complete fact that you have friends who are not even committal who can't even hold a relationship for two weeks or even for six months some of you are in a such in a state of consumption that you actually consume people you want this person until someone else better comes along and someone else better comes along or someone that has more materialistic things someone that can offer you a different lifestyle and you're jumping from one consumption to another from one person to another so what is really uh, the most probable ways to have success is it looking at your friends who are not married? How many of your friends who are not married have been together for 30, 40, 60 years and happy together? So stop comparing things that are not even worth comparison. I was not even going to get into the value of the statistics, where they come from, what they reflect. But even if you take it as a of value, 50% chance is always better than zero or 1% or 10%. So compare what is comparable. And also, when speaking of marriages, because there is this narrative about you getting married and your husband is beating you or taking all the money or you being abused or used and so, so forth and so on. Since when do you measure your aspiration for marriage with people who are dysfunctional, with people who are angry or bitter, who, are, who went into the marriage for the wrong reason? There are all kinds of reasons that people get married nowadays. It can be for money, it can be for an arrangement, for a transaction, it could be for a lifestyle. It could be just because they have children. It could be just because this is a person who wanted them. All of those wrong reasons are going to make it harder for you to be happy in a marriage or to be fulfilled in a marriage because you're not going to be happy all the time. There is no relationship that you have, whether family with family or professional, that you're happy all the time. And that's normal. That's part of what a real relationship is. A good relationship is supposed to help you build your character, to help you grow personally, to help you grow spiritually, so you improve yourself along the way. Those are why you have relationships that challenges you, relationships that pushes you, relationships that push you to think, to review who you are, to continue striving for who you want to be. And so a marriage is no different from that. You are still going to be required to grow, to, to revise and observe things about yourself. And that partner is going to reflect those things for you so you can see them. And doing it in the, in the constraint or within the protection of marriage, which is a spiritual protection, which is a blessing, is a complete different level to just agreeing to be together for some time. Or until the next person or the Mr. Right or... Mr. Mrs. Wright comes along. This is why you want somebody who gets to that point. Somebody who's willing to commit. Somebody for that, somebody who values their own words. Somebody who's um, worthy. 
they are worthy for themselves first because they are able to take care of themselves. They are responsible for what they do. They take responsibility for who they are and what they do. And then from that growth, from that graduation, they are able to take responsibility for other people. They are able to be accountable and to be engaged and commit to another person, not just the partner that they're going to be with, but the family that comes with that person, the community that's surrounded, the village, and of course the nation. So this is not a, con a commitment that you take just for yourself, just because it's convenient, just because you're only looking at the advantages. It is a commitment that you take because you know you are willing and ready to take, put in the work, as a man and as a woman. And so marriage is a is a foundation of everything in African culture and tradition. There is no African culture or African tradition without the foundation of marriage and a family. And you can even see that with the the slaves in the diaspora, those people risk their lives to marry somebody, to express that commitment because they knew not from a functional kind of way, not looking at the European, they knew that when you meet somebody you want to commit to, somebody you are actually willing to risk your life being with that person, committing with that person, building with that person, creating the children, bringing those children to this world. And they also knew that marriage is not an individual thing. It is not a private part of life, it is a public part of life. The aspect of the engagement of the uh, commitment is public. You don't go hide your your marriage, hide who you're married to. It has to be part of the public domain, part of public knowledge. Everyone in the village knows who you're married to, knows who your children are. And if they don't, that means there is a problem. Because it is a public part of life that people acknowledge whose, uh, whose children are dues. And that we know which family are coming together when there's a wedding taking place. It's not about the party, it's not about the grand things and the cameras and the lights and the action that so many, so many of us today focus on. It's about the sincere engagement that the two families come together and try to observe, try to merge together, put their resources together, continue to build together for the betterment of each person member of the family. And you have to understand that the family unit is something that's particular, that's something that is unique. The people who are born in your family are not people that you personally selected. Those are people who are placed there. Maybe some of them are people you wouldn't even hang out with if it was left to your own volition. But they end up in your family so you are able to deal with that. Those are not people you can detach yourself from. No matter if you go leave uh, thousands of miles away or change your name or or don't even speak to any any of them anymore. There is still a biological link that ties you, there's a spiritual link that ties you, there's an energetical link that ties you. The name that was given by that group, that was given to you by that group, that was carried by your forefathers before you. All of those things comes together to tell you that the family unit is different from the other relationship, from any other relationship you may build in your lifetime, whether it is from a spiritual bond a biological bond, an energetical bond, based on the people who contributed to bringing you here, like your biological parents, and the people who contributed to raising you by contributing to the person you are today. And all of those levels come together. And with the addition of marriage, when you come from a union where two individuals decided that they are going to unify themselves to each other and their families, their clan, they're going to do it in order to honor themselves with the guidance of the elders so they are able to also guide the children that are going to come from this union for the betterment of the family, for the betterment of the village, for the betterment of the community and the nation. When you have this vision that goes beyond yourself, beyond just you and what you want, what you aspire to, and you're able to build a vision for your family, a vision that comes in that, that integrates also the, the village and the community. It is a, a vision of divine inspiration. So you're truly reaching a point that's attainable to anyone who wishes to 
think that way, who wishes to extend and expand themselves in that way and look beyond what people are talking about. Also, it is important for many of you that you seek the company of people who have the same value. Life is not about having the most fun that you can have, living your best life. Life is also about growing personally, spiritually, and having certain moral values, working your character, improving your character, building your character. So you can be a model to those who are looking at you even when you don't see them, even when you don't know they're looking at you as a model, as an example for what to do next, for how to do certain things. And embracing and assuming this responsibility is part of a spiritual growth. Spiritual growth requires you to be constantly evolving and changing and transforming yourself and not stagnating, not being comfortable, not doing anything that being comfortable in your mediocrity. It's, aspir it's aspiring to excellence, aspiring to always doing your best in any given situation. So for that, it is important that you seek the company, you seek the guidance of people who are married and who have been married and happy to be married. As we mentioned earlier, many people marry for the wrong reasons. Many people are unhappy in the marriage and many people, as you've mentioned, have seen, separate or get divorced. Those are not the people you need to seek company and you need to seek guidance from. You need to aim to find people who are married, happily married. And when I mean happily married, I don't mean happy all the time, uh, living it up in a romantic kind of way. I mean people who are willing to go through challenges and face them together with their family and the community to make it through. People who have faced challenges and are still together. And when you listen to them, when you are within their presence, when you are within their energy, you'll be able to feel the love that bonds them, the tenderness that they have for each other, the respect that they share, the growth that they've, they've endured through the challenges that they face together. And that should comfort you that after 20, 30, 40, or 50 years, they will tell you that they still are discovering things about each other. They're still discovering things about themselves that they didn't know. And that is not a matter of the routine, that there are so many things that they have yet to discover, to explore together. And that they look forward to the next 50 years again to, together. And if you haven't been in the presence of people who are happily married, that have built a life for themselves based on some of the same value that you share, with love, compassion, honesty, respect, devotion for each other, if you haven't experienced that, let it be something that you aspire to experience. Make room among your entourage to have space for those people to come into your life. They're not hiding in the corner. They are just waiting for you to open up to the possibilities. Possibilities of a lifetime partnership that can be glorious. Where you're not going to be anticipating or scared of the challenges that may come along your way. On the contrary, you will be looking forward to it because you know that the partner by your side, the families that are coming together with you, will be there along the way to help you through. And that most of all, the divine will be there. Because wherever love is present, the divine is also present. And the blessing that comes from your commitment to this path are going to be endless and limitless. As endless and limitless as you want them to be. And so in the, with this fire within yourself, with this desire for a partner, for a lifelong partner, keep working on yourself so that you transform yourself to be the wife that you would like to be, to be the husband that you will want to be, to be the protector, the purveyor, for the family that you will hold, 
to be able to, to be the nurturer, to provide the loving essence, to be the first teacher of the how to love for those children, to be able to protect the children who are going to come up, and to be able together to learn and know who they are so you can guide them to the best of your abilities and so that the families can come together as well as the village and the community will help raise them and help them give them the space and the guidance needed for them to fulfill to be fulfilled and to fulfill their own destinies this is why I wish for you beloved may as this year is ending and may the new year that comes along, may you reflect on marriage, it's important in your life. May you look at the people, the couples around you that may be dysfunctional, that may not be quite as you will aspire to see marriage. May you look at them with compassion, not with disdain, not with judgment. But may you make room to seek out the people who are more on the same moral spectrum as you, who aspire to the same thing as you, and may they come to your life and enrich your experience. So thank you for being with me, and of course you can leave me uh, your comments or what you think in the comment section, and I'll talk to you in the next video.